I thought it was really appropriate because I want to start out with some scriptures tonight a little bit. Um, this is Women's Week, of course, and uh, happens every year. And I was telling Sam, I said, she's saying it's, it's what, it's International Women's Day or something, whatever day they have. And I said, well, why is it this week? And a lot of people don't realize it really all ties back to Esther. And the fact that the Jews this week are celebrating Purim, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday. And, uh, of course, Esther's prime in, in that celebration. And that's the reason this is Women's Week. You have, you have Women's Month now. You have Women's Day. And it's all in this week. So I thought we'd highlight that a little bit tonight. There's a couple of things come to mind that I want to talk about. So you want to go ahead and open us with prayer with one that we came across? <clears throat> Father, thank you for continually speaking to us. May the ears of those that know you be opened to your leading. May our eyes be cognizant of your actions and our hearts be open to your commands. May you speak to the hearts of those that don't yet know you so that they may allow your spirit to water that seed of faith that you placed there for this very moment. In Jesus' name. Okay, and what I want to key on that there is it talks about having, keeping your ears and your heart and everything open. And... Heather and I, was, we were, I don't know, it was the day before yesterday, I think, we were on our Bible study. It just hit me while I was sitting there. I said, well, I said, let's go read Esther, a little bit of Esther for a minute. So we did, and here's what we read. We went to Esther chapter 4, uh, verses uh, 13 and 14, and it says, Mordecai sent, I think everybody knows the, the story, but let's, let's dig into this just a little bit. Mordecai sent this reply to Esther. Don't think for a moment that because you're in the palace, you will escape when all the other Jews are killed. If you keep quiet at a time like this, deliverance and relief for the Jews will arise from some other place, but you and your relatives will die. Who knows if perhaps you were made queen for just such a time as this. Now, <clears throat> Let's pick his part just a little bit. Mordecai wasn't standing there telling her to go do this. All right? You can kind of imagine the conversation, and he, he kind of, you know, who knows? Maybe you were made for a time like this. I, I, that's the way I see that, that coming down. So then I asked Heather, and I was talking, I said, okay, then what did Heather do? Or what did Heather do? What did Esther do after that question was posed? She had her eyes or had her ears open and her heart obviously was open to God. But what did she do? What was the first thing Esther did? Did she prepare a banquet for her? Or is that not what you were looking she for? Fasted. Not quite. She called, she, for, <coughs> okay. she, called she called for prayer and fasting. All right. And I, there's a real lesson there. And the lesson is this, God very often, this back to what he's talking about in, this, in that prayer she was given, and he tells us so often, you know, that we need, to have, we need to have wisdom and discernment, we need to think. And that's what she did. And she didn't, the other thing was, which you may not know, uh, at that time when um, the king... King had a beauty academy for his prospects, what it amounted to. They spent a year in beauty school. And as you read through here, part of the story also that we know, when they were going, when their name was called to go before the king, they could take whatever they needed out of the academy to make themselves look as good as possible. All right? What did she take? She didn't take anything, nothing. And that's, that's part of this story, too, in that <clears throat> she had such faith and reliance in God, 
she had called for, and she did herself, she fasted. It was a three-day fast that they had. She asked others to pray for her, intercessory prayer. So they prayed, and she fasted, and she knew, or in her heart, she had the feeling that God was going to use her. She didn't need anything else. And that's kind of a little missed part of this story, I think. People don't stop and think about the fact here she could have taken anything she wanted to help please the king. She didn't take anything but God with her. So I just thought I'd throw that out. As I think it's kind of a, uh, it's like uh, Paul Harvey would say, and now the rest of the story. The story was what we read, but there's more to that story. And I just wanted to point that out. The other thing I wanted to do, I come across another scripture. It's, and it's back here. It's the words. You know, Mordecai says, who knows if perhaps you were made queen in such a time as this. He put out words to cause thinking, the thought. So then let's go to Isaiah chapter 55. <clears throat> verses 10 and 11, and it says, what chapter, was that? chapter 55 of Isaiah, I'll give you a second to get there, verses 10 and 11, and Isaiah says, the rain and snow come down from the heavens and stay on the ground to water the earth. They cause the grain to grow, producing seed for the farmer and bread for the hungry. And the Lord said, It is the same with my word. I send it out, and it always produces fruit. It will accomplish all I want it to, and it will prosper everywhere I send it. There again, it's showing them, you know, using the analogy that words are like rain. And how, how the cycle of having the right word for someone at the right time. And that's what the, what the Lord is saying here. I send it out. It always produces fruit. It doesn't always produce it immediately. You know, we get, our human part is we expect things to happen right now. I always have. I've, I've always been a terribly impatient person. And the thing of it is, you plant a seed today. We were talking about, we we're working with a, a family down at Batesville that's got tremendous problems. And he came up. It was funny. He made the comment to us. When was he here? It was last Saturday, wasn't it? And he said, you know, they were working through some really severe family problems with their kids. And he made the comment. He says, I always like coming and sitting down and talking to you guys because I feel better when I leave. Mm -hmm. yeah. Well, yeah. So... It's back to this thing here of planting the words. We've planted words with him multiple times and, uh, and still are and challenging him. Uh, we challenged him pretty hard Saturday to the point that I may be wondering if he'd ever be back again. But it's funny, I, I went by, I went down to Sunman to pick up a piece of equipment. So I come back through Batesville Tried to find his house. I, I drove right by it and didn't recognize it again. I'd only been down there once. But I called him later, and he's fine. He's, you know, we didn't scare him off, but we sure, we sure planted some really, really deep seeds or tried to. And it'd be interesting to see. And that's, that's why here, you know, you've got you to gotta have the patience. It's funny, just like I planted, you'll get a kick out of this. I planted tomatoes on a Tuesday morning, okay, in the house, set them back in the wood, and where the wood burner is, it's, it's about 85 degrees in there. Those things sprouted in two days. Two days I had tomatoes out of the ground. And you'll see a lot of times, you know, when you plant something like that, it'll be a week. And that's, that's just what made me think about this is, we, we can't be impatient um, when we plant our words. 
you got to have patience. And then the other thing is tonight I wanted you to go home with is this story of Esther of if you feel like God's telling you something, one way to be sure is take the, take the method she did, prayer and fast over it. I think a lot of people, too, think that to fast you have to not eat or drink anything for two or three days. Or That's not it. What's, you know, it's so often with fast, what fasting is to me, and I think the right way to look at it, because it's done in different ways throughout the Bible, um, take something that you really enjoy and do away with it, and then every time that you have the yearning for that thing, that's telling you to pray. And, it, and not pray about giving you strength, in our case, we, we will take something like this family I'm talking about, and if we were to fast, we, would, we may fast, and every time that, say, you get hungry or you have a desire, like where it's a cup of coffee or whatever it is, pray, do that intercessory prayer. It's a reminder that fasting is a reminder telling you, hey, stop and pray, stop and pray. Because you're going to have those physical desires for whatever you're fasting on. So anyhow, just throwing it out, food for thought, nothing more. Okay, right now I'll just open it up. Is there any questions on anything you want to talk about before I talk about any of this stuff? Is there anything that's, that's going on in the world or happening in an area that someone's got specific questions on? I would try to answer it. <clears throat> Pardon? There's just too much going on. Oh yeah, it's amazing. <laughs> I just, mm -hmm. I I I went down to uh, do some work for one of our uh, Amish neighbors this morning, and she always has coffee and fresh made cinnamon rolls for me when I get down. When I go down there, she tries to fatten me. But uh, anyhow, we sat down and, and talking, and they were asking me, you know, about <clears throat> some things going on around the world. And uh, we got into a very deep discussion for about 40 minutes talking about all the stuff that is going on. And it's just, it is amazing in so many different parts of the world. So no specific questions? Uh, I want sure. to bring something Daphne shared with me today. Uh, <coughs> Governor DeSantis in Florida, he's really cracking down on a lot of stuff going on in schools. Mm -hmm. She said this 12-year-old boy... Uh, got a book out of the school library. Did you hear that? He read it. He read and it was a pornography book. Yeah, he read it. And there's, there's two. Oh, he read it to the board. He read yeah. it to the school yeah. board. There was another lady here about a month or six weeks ago. Uh, it was out west. I think it was maybe Idaho or Wyoming. She did the same thing. She went to the school board meeting opened a book and started reading, and the president of the school board said, you can't talk about that in here. Yeah. It's in the library. All the kids can read it. And she went ahead and finished reading it. Yeah. And all of that, they were in a terrible uproar. You bring up a really good question or a comment on something that I didn't write down specifically other than I circled about uh, what's happening not only just here in the United States but worldwide. All these, you've heard me saying there before, a lot of these conspiracy theories, they're starting to find out they're all true. Or not all of them, but a lot is true. Mm -hmm. All these texts are starting to come out. Mm -hmm. And at the same time, it seems like, especially here in the, well, not just here in the States, world, worldwide, people have had enough of this stuff. And they're starting to try to make a difference. I, you know, we've got a group of in the House of Representatives that's doing a good job of standing up and trying to change things. Um, you see people going to the school boards like this child did and uh, the lady I was talking about out in Idaho. It, they're starting a challenge and we all need to do that. If you're in a situation where you can, there's an opportunity possibly to turn things around. You, you just... You just, we just don't know how God's working on this stuff. And the thing of it is, if we don't stand up and say anything, nothing is going to happen. Nothing's going to change. Uh, that's a mistake we've made for at least my lifetime of not standing up and challenging this stuff when they started taking prayer out of the schools and et cetera. You know, just 
so much as uh, we've given up so much. But people are starting to have enough. And these texts that are coming out are proving that, yeah, they really do lie to us. And we've been lied to continually. I had a note here on, um, in, in Britain. Um, there was a text that came out this week and talking about how things are coming about. The British government purposely used fear to help control the people during the COVID outbreak. The text came out, and that's why I say it's happening. Not, it's not just happening here in the States. It's happening all around the world. Uh, the leadership in Britain at that time, uh, Boris Johnson, they, there's texts that come out that show that they were talking to each other and say, we, we've got to talk about fear on this to, to make the people uh, want to do what we're going to tell them to do, basically is what the text showed. And it just goes on and on. And you've got, there's so much of these leftist governments around the world that um, just, you know, they just want a total control. And they'll use, they have used any means possible to make it happen. And that, that's a big deal. Good example, we'll just jump right in, go to the Mideast with Israel, of course, the center of the universe. Um, they're having major riots. It's, it's, it, they had a big one today. Netanyahu was going to fly out of uh, Tel Aviv to, I forget where he was going, to another one of the Arab countries, I think. They were going to block <clears throat> all the highways so he couldn't get to the airport. Uh, they had almost a million people pour out into the streets last week, shutting, shut, they shut Israel down for a while, shut the highways and stuff down. What's going on there? They are protesting that the conservatives, you know, they're a democracy. The conservatives are now in, in charge of the, have the majority to where they can pass laws. And of course, Netanyahu is a conservative and he'll sign them. They're trying to change the way their Supreme Court operates is what they're trying to do. And the leftists want no part of it. And they're, they are just disrupting things. I mean, it's been going on for several weeks now. Even to the point some of the reservist uh, pilots were refusing to go do training uh, because of, of this thing. Uh, they're hammering those, by the way. But they're going to get prosecuted, it looks like. But, of course, our leftist government stepping right in trying to force Israel to concede to the leftists over there. Uh, it's really interesting to note that all of a sudden we've got all kinds of people coming from the United States government going to Israel. The latest one was uh, our Secretary of Defense and what they're doing. They did, I don't know this for a fact, but the, they're saying that what he was doing was going over and telling them, hey, if you, don't, if you guys change this Supreme Court thing and uh, change the control the leftists have at this time, uh, we're not going to back you. And so part of that is last week there was a vote in the UN against Israel. Normally in, on the Security uh, Council, which the United States has a veto power, of course, on, on Security Council, well, we didn't stop it. We didn't vote no. And that, all that is to try to force the Netanyahu government to do what the leftists want done and what our leftist government wants. So we're meddling in it. Um, pretty much the other thing that's going on, we talked about this, and I, and I mentioned it here a couple weeks ago, about the level of Palestinian attacks. And the thought occurred to me, I got looking at the age of these Palestinians that's been doing the terrorist attacks. They're all pretty young. Well... It makes sense because what have the Palestinians been doing for the last 10, 15 years? They teach their children how to become terrorists, okay? These, these young terrorists answer to no one. They're not controlled by anybody, but their parents have trained them how to become good terrorists, how to become good martyrs, and that's what's happening. You've got this age group that all of a sudden they're the ones that's doing the terrorist work. 
Well, they've been trained for it since they're little kids. Have you seen, probably most of you have seen, you've seen the little four and five years old in the military uniforms with the guns and, and they sang songs at school on how to kill Jews. And I mean, it just goes on and on. The bad thing was at one time we were funding all of that. We are again. Trump stopped it. Uh, it was through the UNESCO, which is the UN uh, subsidiary that we gave money to to fund the Palestinian things. The Palestinians use a lot of their money for two things. They train their kids to kill, people, kill Jews. And as you can see, what happens to these terrorist attacks? They fall out on the streets handing candy out to each other, celebrating the fact they just killed a Jew. It happens every time. And that's within the borders of Israel. Remember the map I gave you? Those blue areas on the map? That's where this is going on. Those people fall out as soon as they hear, hear that a Jew's been killed, start passing out candy on the street and celebrating. So why wouldn't the kids learn to kill? Sue? Not that long ago, didn't they have a big celebration when Obama was elected president? Oh, yeah. Sure did. Yep. Um, keep, your, keep your ears open on Israel because... Uh, Ramadan starts March 23rd. That is a time of fasting and prayer and reflection for the Arabs. Okay? Also, it's a time to let's kill people. So that's part of the reflection, I guess. Uh, they're looking, it's looking like there's potential for a really uptick. The reason being, um, you know, it goes back... You guys all realize Jerusalem's a split city. Okay. Jordan controls, of course, the Temple Mount and everything. This is in their agreement from, from years ago. It's a split city. Well, what Ben Gavir, and I mentioned to you weeks ago when Gavir was elected and they put this government together, I said, watch Ben Gavir because he is an Orthodox Jew, far right. And in some cases, those, those people get to be as bad as the ones on the far left, to be honest with you. But he's far right, very conservative. He's in charge of security. Well, what he's doing now, Israel's always been doing this to an extent. There's a lot of, uh, in that blue areas that you see uh, on the map, there's a lot of illegal houses built. There's houses built that they didn't get a building permit for or whatever. Palestinians have built them. Well, what they do, what Israel's been doing, especially with these terrorist attacks, they'll go in and tear them down. They'll go, they'll go over into the Palestinian area after there's been a terrorist attack, and in a lot of cases, the terrorist family, they'll tear their house down as retribution, but they, they, do, away, they do away with these illegal settlements, these illegal houses. Well, they normally they quit doing that during Ramadan, the month of, that they'll have a month celebration starting on March 23rd. Ben Gavir says, "I'm not going to this year. I'm going to keep tearing them down." So, you've got this head-to-head -head butting going on now in Israel that's going to inflame things more. Gavir's not backing off, and uh, so it's, it's probably going to be a, a pretty hot time over there for a while. Um, of course, next door, talk about Iran. Uh, well, I would mention, too, Israel made a very big, serious attack on, the, uh, on Syria this week. They hit Aleppo Airport, which is their main airport, and they did quite a bit of damage. And what's, what's been going on there, and the reason they're doing that, uh, we mentioned it once before, Iran will fly, <coughs> excuse me, commercial flights in. They're supposed to be having people on them, but they're bringing in arms. Is what they're going to bring missile parts and things of that nature. And Israel has a great network of information. Their intelligence is second to none, and they know that. And when that stuff comes in, they wipe it out. That's what they're doing now. So that's what's going on there. In Iran, uh, you maybe have heard they've been on the news a little bit. They're enriching, they've got their uranium enriched enough now to where it looks like they could make some bombs. Uh, 
it's really funny because they know Israel's getting ready to strike them and to take out their nuclear, <coughs> excuse me, take out their nuclear capability. Um, of course, the IAEA, the international um, group that, that watches over the nukes around the world, they're that was part of that agreement, that JPOC agreement, where they went in and they were supposed to be looking at Iran and making sure they're not making nuclear weapons, and it was all Obama's uh, fiasco. But they kicked all that out. Of course, Trump Trump did away with the treaty. He said, "Now nah, we're not we're not going to go there." And when that happened, they kicked these observers out. Kicked the, what they did, they went in. They set up cameras to watch, supposedly, all of the uranium production that Iran was doing. Well, Iran disconnected the cameras and stuff. Well, now that they've got the uranium enriched, all of a sudden they're back saying, oh, IEA, come on back. We'll work with you. It's a delay tactic. And what they're doing, they're trying to, to get some sympathy. In the United States, of course, Biden administration, they wanted to start the treaty all over again. Uh, but it's a delay tactic because they're there now for the bomb. The other thing that popped up yesterday was when that agreement took place under Obama, part of the deal was that Iran had to get rid of a lot of the uranium they had. So they did. They shipped it to Russia. Well, it kind of looks like maybe Russia's bringing it back. So don't know that for a fact. That's a question mark right now. I haven't been able to verify it, but it, it, it makes sense. Because Russia and Iran is really close now. They're, they're working very close together. Let's see. Oh, did you pick up what they did during Women's Week over there for their women? They're poisoning school kids, girls. They're, po they're poisoning girls at girls' school. And it's the big thing is they, they want, you know, for some reason, you know, and I, I don't quite, it's got to tie to the religion somehow. Uh, of course, the Taliban's really terrible. They, the kids can't even go to school. If you go, you go into Afghanistan or Iraq, uh, anywhere the Taliban's in charge, women are not allowed to be educated, period. In Iran, they do have schools for the kids, but in this case here, they're poisoning they, they poisoned the girls at the girls' school. And uh, so it just shows you the, how depraved governments they are that's run by the Muslim religion. You would think, though, that, that they would want to create more people in Iran. You take out the girls, that's not going to happen. Yeah. Well, they're, just, they're trying to scare them from going to school is what they're doing. <clears throat> yeah. Oh, okay. I was going to say. Yeah. So, yeah, that was a biggie. Uh, didn't have much else in, uh, in the uh, Mideast or there. Armenia going up around the Mesopotamia area. Um, Armenia, which, you know, we had Mark was here, uh, Sergey. And I think he's supposed to come back sometime this month, I believe. He was planning on it. He's planning on coming back and bringing his wife back, uh, which I hope he does. But uh, anyhow, nothing's really changed there. That They're still restricting that corridor that they had the road closed, and um, it's, it's been a very bad winter over there. The uh, There again, Armenia is so small. I mean, you, back again, we talked about Israel being small. Armenia is a small country, and not very big, not very many people. Uh, they're an old, proud people. There's probably as many Armenians living in California as there is Armenia. And uh, there, there's a large enclave of Armenians that live in the Los Angeles area. They actually have a community. So, but anyhow, not much has changed over there that I've been able to find out. Go up into Europe, uh, talk about the war. Uh, Russia hit them really hard last night. And there were some interesting things that's happened. They've had some Ukrainian, quote-unquote, terrorists 
Russia calls them terrorists, but they had some of the Ukrainians slipped over the Russian border and blew up some stuff. And Putin's heavy retribution, that just happened last week. And they're basically doing payback. Although, I, I still can't, you're starting to see now that even some of the United States military brass are, are starting to say, well, can't quite tell you what it's going to look like the Ukrainian, whether they're going to win this war or not. They're not. You've heard me say that from day one. Ukraine's not going to win this. Russia's going to do what Russia's going to do and have. And what's happened here in the last couple of weeks, the weather over there has been kind of like ours. You get a little bit of cold weather and then it's back warm again, a little cold, a little warm. They had kind of a cold snap last week. Uh, the ground in the southern part of the Ukraine froze over some, so Russia was able to move some more stuff in. Russia is going to take Bakhmut, um, which is a key, key area. They've got it almost totally surrounded. They've got all the eastern side of the town. It's a, it's a main point on a, on a river there of, on eastern Ukraine. And it's, the ground's kind of like it is here. It's kind of rolling and, you know, kind of hilly and stuff. And you've got these communities, you've got few large cities. But here's what, here's what you're going to see Russia do or what they're trying to do. They're trying to encircle the Bakhmut so they can just shut the Ukrainians off. And Ukrainians have been, they've been, they've lost a lot of people this last week, a bunch. It's been a bloodbath. Um, they're going to push the Ukrainians across that river. I think it's called the Bakhmut River or something like that. But uh, when they do, it's kind of like going from southern Fayette County to northern Fayette County. What happens when you go up around Bentonville, north of Harrisburg? Ground gets flat, okay? When that happens, if they surround this Bakhmut area and they start pushing the Ukrainians, they're pushing the Ukrainians out of the hilly country into the flatlands. And that's when the bloodbath starts. Yeah, that's when you lose people. Uh, Any time in war, you get out, try to fight on flat, open terrain, you're, you're at mercy of the, of the aggressors. And that's what's, that's what's going to happen uh, from all obvious indications. Um, it becomes just a kill zone. The other thing that was interesting last night or early this morning, our time, when Russia struck uh, this time, they sent like, if I remember right, 80, 80 missiles and I forget how many drones, weren't too many drones. But they, sh they, they shot 80 missiles. The Ukrainians claim they downed 30 of them, which they may have. They've got some of our armament over there. But the interesting thing is there were six to eight of those missiles that were the hypersonic that we were talking about last time we was in here. They couldn't shoot them down. They didn't hit any of them. And that's the thing. Russia's got a lot of these hypersonic missiles. We don't have the capacity to take them down. Uh, and we don't, have, we don't have the technology to take those things out. And that was proved yesterday. Russia launched their hypersonics, and every one of them hit the target. And they, they, hit, they hit some things. I think Kiev, Kiev, of course, is a capital. I think Kiev has, before the war started, Kiev had a couple million people in it. Probably half of those are gone because we talked about this before. About half the Ukrainian population has left the country and they're not coming back. Most of them will not return. There's not going to be anything to return to. Have any of you seen the drone pictures of these cities that they've been bombing? Mm -hmm. They just wipe them out. I mean, there's nothing there. That's the way Russia fights. And, uh, but anyhow, the... Uh, Kiev was hit last night, and half the city was taken out electricity, and it's 32 degrees, and they don't have any electricity today. Half the city does it. One of the titles to a YouTube a video said that Ukraine was retreating, would you say? And I didn't watch it. Yeah. 
but would you say that's... They've retreated some. Not, it's not been in mass, but uh, they, <clears throat> the other day they were blowing up bridges. At the Bakhmut area, as the Russians were coming in, they were blowing up bridges across. There's several streams through there, and they were blowing up the bridges behind them to slow the Russians down. So uh, what Russia's trying to do is go clear around on the west side. There's a main artery that comes in, main highways that comes in that area. Russia needs to snip it off. When they do that, then they can't resupply anybody that's in Bakhmut, and Russia owns it. So it's, it's going to happen. It's just a matter of when, not if. Um, it's interesting to note I don't know, maybe we spend too much time on the European war, but the thing of it is, people just do not realize how close we are to all-out World War III. Mm -hmm. we've, we've, we've talked about that before, and it's a scary proposition. Uh, they, uh, but I got looking the other day, I came across an article talking about the global south, all the countries south of the equator, none of them support the West fighting against it. They think Russia, they think what we're doing is wrong, which is interesting. Uh, they say the global south does not support the endeavor fighting against Russia and the Ukraine. I thought that was interesting. Like I said, U.S. is starting to downplay a Ukrainian victory. If you just, you just kind of watch closely what some of the talking heads are talking about. Um, it doesn't matter how this war ends. What's going to come out of it is the United States will no longer be the superpower of the world. That's happening. Biden has hit our war supplies for the 33rd time. He's decreased our supplies. Now, you got to stop and think, so, oh, well, we'll make more. Here's the problem. Everything they're making is going to the Ukrainian war. Yeah. So we're not resupplying our pantry. And we and and China's watching this. They know it just emboldens them to do something. That's why World War III's. It, I mean, we're just on the brink of it. The uh, let's see where we got one other thing as far as the country. And I'll mention China here for a minute, and then uh, I want to go into what I call um, tech steps to the Antichrist. And I, got, I came up with a long list of those today for us to talk about. Some of them you've probably heard of, some of them you haven't. But uh, Iraq has dropped using the dollar to do business with China. They're using the Chinese wand. Yeah. And then the other thing that just really shocked me, I read the day before yesterday, we, you all know who BRICS is. We've talked about BRICS. Brazil, Russia, India, China, and South Africa. That's the initial BRICS. And we talk about people wanting to join them. Saudi Arabia, uh, several of the Mideastern countries are, are looking. Iraq's one of them. are looking to we want to be part of this. Our neighbor is Mexico. Mexico's meeting with China, and they want to be part of BRICS. Yeah, how about that? Pathway to the U.S. Yeah, and that's something. And what you see is, of course, the the we've talked about is that we're seeing a worldwide shifting of powers and allegiances happen. You know, in, in the 1930s before World War II, but this time you see the pieces coming together in such that. The Bible, end time prophecy we talk about, you can start painting the picture on the wall of how that's why we're talking about it. You start seeing these things come together in ways that prophecy will be true, will come true. And uh, that, that's why we bring it up. Any questions on anything I've covered tonight or politics or anything? Well, when you talk about the Mexico thing, it makes you wonder, why would Mexico benefit from that, other than the cartel totally runs Mexico. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> so you have to almost believe that to make that union with BRICS, it would benefit the cartel. 
Yeah, and you're right, and they're doing it because of trade. China is the largest export nation in the world. They make more stuff than anyone else. And China is one of their largest trading partners now. So that's what's, that's why, right. You know, I thought about this many years ago when all this, especially after Kissinger opened China during uh, Richard Nixon's term back in the 70s. Uh, I thought then it was a good thing because I had thought at that time, uh, I remember I was, I was in college at that time working, I, I was in the Air Force, but I went to college at night. And I remember I was in some college classes. I think I was at the University of Maryland at that time. Yeah, I would have been. Uh, we had discussions on stuff about things happening. I thought, you know, this is probably a good thing. I remember making that argument one night. And the teacher says, well, why? And I said, because people that are trading with each other tend not to fight each other. Okay. That, that was my belief at that time. But I tell you what, that's the only thing right now that's keeping things from just totally blowing up because of the trade that's going on. But it's getting pushed to the side. And the reason being, these, we've, got a, we've got a total Cold War started again. This time it's not between us and, and Eastern Europe. This Cold War is between us and China. And you see it, China's preparing for war. We're now starting to talk about it, although I think it's too little too late. But China's preparing. And what happens when you have these cold wars? People get, you've got two distinct ideologies going on. And it's all about bluster in cold war. It's all about all the time you're on the brink of war. Okay, that's the way we were with the Berlin Wall. You're just, you're just right there all the time. And what happens is someone finally gets to the point that they think that the other side is going to do something, so we got to do it first. And that's the big danger. That's when things blow up, is when one of the sides on the Cold War kind of sees the other side, and you hear that coming out of China. China is really hammering the United States. I mean, just like today, um, McCarthy, our Speaker of the House, there is the, the lady that's the president of Taiwan, I can't remember her name. She's coming through L.A. for a meeting, and he's going to meet with her, Okay. China today said, told Biden, Biden, you need to tell him not to meet with her. Just flat out. It's not, and then the other thing you see in the last week is Xi Ping. Normally what happens in China, Xi Ping is of course in control, but he has all these talking heads saying what he's thinking. Last week, Xi Ping himself come out and started hammering the United States his own words in a speech, that's never done. You just don't do that. He does. In, in their, their world, they don't do that. They let the underlings put the word out. Xi Ping himself. That shows how they're elevating this all the time. So, your question? Yeah, I want to say, uh, we've made enemies with Russia, too. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I mean, Russia, I mean, they hate us too because we did some things to them. That mm -hmm. pipeline, we were involved in that. Yeah. And everything. Um, do you know Brother uh, Dimitri Dudeman? Have you heard of him? Mm -hmm. From, from right. Romania. I spent mm -hmm. a month, my husband and I spent a month with him before he died. Really? And everything. He had a prophecy in 84 where China and Russia invade the United States. Yeah. yeah. And I believe it's going to happen yeah. because we made the enemies with them. Yeah. We've stuck our nose in everything. Right, we have. I mean, we're bad. Mm -hmm. Yeah. <laughs> we're one of the worst nations there is. We've caused a lot. Yeah. Yeah, we really have. And and so we talked about that in here. Made, this whole Ukrainian thing was set up by the United States oh, in 2014. Yeah, so. it was. Anyhow, so it's... I want to ask something else, too. You're talking about Israel and everything. Uh, tell me about the cabal. 
that's a Jewish thing, and it's the kapal is in everything. It's the head of every every country. It's uh, it's an evil thing. And it's all about this. Yeah. It's, it's all, all money. It's they it's. They want the control. Yeah. Yeah. They want the control. Yeah. And. Um, Money is what's driving everything in the world right now. Yeah. Really is. I mean, you look at the, you look at what went on in, in Davos, uh, the World Economic Forum. Um, it's all about control, and that has to happen because it's when the Antichrist comes, yeah. he's going to. Yeah. Here, here's the thing we keep talking about, and you, you've heard me say this so many times. It's all about the fact that. We're watching each all these little steps take place so that when the Antichrist does show up, it's already everything's already in place for him to step in and take control. Mm -hmm. So all this has to happen. Yeah. Yeah. It all has to happen that way. Yeah. yeah. I want to bring up something else you was talking about earlier about uh, the schools, how you have to step up to them and whenever they're wrong. Well, my son, he was in the junior high at that time. That's been a long time ago. And uh, they were teaching on evolution. And my son said, I don't believe that. We were created by God. And uh, so then his teacher told all the kids, make fun of him and everything. Mm -hmm. So we, I went before the board and everything. I told them what was, I went, no, I went to the principal first. And I said, this is not right. And then I went before the board and we had a minister and some my friends and everything, and uh, he about got fired. Yeah. That he about got fired, and uh, they had to, we had them to put creation books in the classes too, mm -hmm. and everything. And that's kind so, of things we I'm talking about. Got to you got to stand up and do it. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, let's let's end up with tech steps to the Antichrist, and I've got a page and a half. And some of these I'm just going to throw out and you want to talk about them in detail, we will more. Newest thing in AI, mood cameras. AI can now, they can set a camera up with the right artificial intelligence and it will d determine what kind of mood you're in. Australia was, Australia's using it and where they're using it is if they have a like a bunch of protesters getting together or something, this mood camera will determine whether those people are a real threat or not. Computer, now remember this back to this thing, this computer through a camera is going to determine what you're thinking about doing. Stuff's for real. Are the times coming where we're all going to be a threat? Is that it? Oh, sure. Mm -hmm. so we're yeah. all just going to be nothing yeah. but just a threat? Mm-hmm. Um, One of the channels that I that I check on Doug occasionally is uh, Lisa Haven, and she posted just today. Men beware! New tech lets your wife see everything you're thinking. Yeah. Wow. <laughs> and that that's that's what I'm talking. That's exactly what I'm talking about. Yeah. yeah this this, and what it is is because they've they've been pouring enough of this data in that the AI can now take that data and determine what kind of mood you're in, whether you're angry or sad or depressed or happy or whatever, see. And if, they, if you're in a protest situation and they're picking up all this anger, they know to send the cops in. It's back to, and remember I told you this, I think a couple weeks ago I mentioned it, um, Biden is getting ready to sign. In fact, he came out, their press secretary came out last week, said, oh yeah, we're going to sign that. Biden signing a directive that gives World Health Organization the right to manage a pandemic. All right, now, and this, this, this other part, I think I told you it was in the Connersville News Examiner, where they're talking about that AI now will be able to predict when there's going to be a pandemic outbreak. Yeah, and AI, and they, it was in the Connersville News Examiner. Uh, it, it talked about, there was a statement made, there's so much data to be involved that a human can't do it. 
it has to be AI. They have to use a computer and artificial intelligence to make these predictions. So what they will do, you, you start adding this stuff together, mood cameras, AI predicting uh, that, well, we're gonna have a pandemic outbreak in Fayette County, Indiana. We gotta shut that sucker down. That's what's coming, okay? in a short period of time, because they're, they're working out. Biden's getting ready to sign that bill. And I know Congress, uh, there's conservatives in Congress are, are trying, and I think there might be an opportunity, they might be able to get it through the Senate, but they're passing a bill to prevent him from doing that. But the problem is, if he vetoes that bill, it's gotta go back to the Senate and they gotta have 60 votes to override the veto, which they're not gonna get at this time doesn't look like. Mm -hmm. It was probably back, I watch um, A-Star a lot, mm -hmm. and on the Joni Table Talk, probably back in, I want to say September or October of last year, she had a, a woman that was a former senator on there that was on there to talk about that right there. Mm -hmm. And she told about how the head of the WHO is a Marxist and he's backed by China completely and, you know, on and on. And it was, what is the, I can't think of the name of it, but what is the, it's the G something G7, seven. meeting that they have. G7, G9. Oh, they have, yes, that summit, G something, something. Yeah, that, that's the most... Uh, the, high, the top econo economic countries of the world, G7, G9, they meet. Yeah. Well, they were meeting, when she was on Daystar, it was like September or October, she had stated that in November of, that, of last year, they were going to be meeting at that summit, and the number one topic to vote on was going to be that right there. Yeah. Then she came back on her show after that summit, and gave an update that it did not get voted in. But she said the fight is not over. Right, the, the reason it wasn't voted in, they didn't have the details written yet on how they're going to measure this stuff and how they're going to control it. They're in the process of doing that now. It's supposed to be done in August. And when it's done in August, it'll be put out for all the countries to vote on. That's what Biden's going to sign into. Yeah. It's supposed to happen in August. And we might go to vote about it and mm. apparently that information was going to be taken to the summit. Yeah. Um, is it too late for anything like that before Biden ever? There's no control over Biden. Like I said, unless they pass the bill in Congress and the Senate and Biden will veto it, it'd have to go back to the Senate for an override unless they can come up with 60 votes to override the veto, it's going to happen. Yeah. And here's the thing. Don't worry about it. It's, got to, it's going to happen. But see, they kept that under the cloak of darkness. Oh, absolutely. They, <laughs> see, that's the thing we were talking about earlier, what's going on with these texts and everything. Yeah. They lie to us. They, they lie to us constantly now. You can't believe anything that comes out. You really can't. And uh, it's just amazing to me that because they believe they're in the right and they're doing the right thing. But it's all part of God's plan. It's like Pastor and I talk about. It's a chess game. And it's the way we look at it anymore. And it's interesting to say, look on the chess board and, you know, well, they moved that knight there. Well, maybe didn't see that coming. Now what's going to be your response? But it's all about God moving the pieces into place yeah. for the end time prophecy to take place. And, you know, I may not live to see it, but I'm beginning to believe I'm going to, yeah. uh, you know, go be here when it happens. Yeah. So we'll see. Yeah. Okay, mood cameras. Okay, get the, the, you guys are going to love these. I don't know if you've heard them or not. John Hopkins University, which is one of the leading medical places in the world, of course, here in the United States, they are using organoid intelligence to create computer. Now, you ask yourself, what's organoid mm -hmm. intelligence? They have taken 
human. They're working on human and AI tying it together, the transhumanism that we're talking about. Along with this, I came up with the article, totally separated from this. Australians have hooked 800,000 human brain cells to a computer and then had it played Pong. You guys remember what Pong was, one of the first internet games? They have, they have hooked 800 live human brain cells to a computer and that computer can play Pong. Now, they talk about, they're, they're so excited about it because it replaces silicone chips. They're gonna, they, they're gonna start using human cells to replace silicone chips. Works faster. So your brain works faster than any computer. Well, and some yeah, for some of us. Where are they getting the brains? Huh? Where are they getting the brains? Now, let me take you. Let me take you to my mouse story that ties in with this. Do you guys know about the mouse? Scientists create mice with two fathers after making eggs from male cells. All right? Now, I want to read just a couple of highlights of this. It's the creation of a mammal with two biological fathers could pave the way for due fertility treatment in humans. It's all about us. It's all why I keep telling you, everything they come out with is going to be telling you it's all about your betterment. Right? Better for the kids, better for your health, better for your life. Scientists have created mice with two bio and I want you to listen to some of these key words. Scientists have created mice with two biological fathers by generating eggs from male cells, a development that opens up radical new possibilities for reproduction. Get this one. The advance could ultimately pave the way for treatments for severe forms of invertility. Okay, it's all about helping us. As well as raising the tantalizing prospect of same-sex couples being able to have a biological child together in the future. It's tantalizing. Notice that word? Yeah. Jesus comes before that. This is the first case of making robust mammal oocytes from male cells, said Kashiyuko Hayashi, who led the work at Kyusha University in Japan and is internationally renowned as a pioneer in the field of lab-grown lab eggs and sperm. He presented this at the Third International Summit on Human Genome Editing in London last Wednesday. He predicts it will be technically possible to create a viable human egg from a male skin cell within the next few years. Others suggest his timeline was optimistic given that scientists are yet to create viable lab-grown human cells from female cells. But they did it with a mouse, okay? Previously, scientists have created mice that technically had two biological fathers through a chain of elaborate steps, including genetic engineering. However, this is the first time viable eggs have been cultivated from male cells and marks a significant advance. His team is now attempting to replicate this achievement with human cells. Although there could be significant hurdles for the use of lab-grown eggs for clinical purposes, including establishing their safety. Purely in terms of technology, it will be possible in humans in less than 10 years. Adding that he personally would be in favor of the technology being used clinically to allow two men to have a baby if it were shown to be safe. I don't know whether they'll be available for reproduction, he said. This is not a question for the scientific program, but also for society. Now, if you don't think they're not playing God, okay, just stop and think about that. And remember, I, we talked about, was it in here I talked last? Yeah, it was. I talked about a man could become a woman 
have a uterus implant and end up having a baby with his own sperm. Okay? Not making this stuff up. And like I said, John Hopkins is involved. You know, one of our leading medical establishments in the world. John Hopkins is involved in this stuff too. Okay, I got just a few more here and we'll, we'll back out of here. Um, have you heard about Satan Con, Satan Con 2023? Did you? you? You guys missed out on this? Pastor was on top of this one. He sent me this one. In Boston, Satan Con, Satan Convention 2023. It is sold out. Here's, here's three of the things I wrote, three or four things. Yeah, three things I wrote down that go be topics in this convention. Deconstructing your religious upbringing. And I'm going to tell you what, today, I'm sitting in my tractor down there plowing. I'm listening to NPR because I like to listen to what the other side talks about sometimes. I'm listening to EPR. They had a half-hour program on deconstructing your religion today, this morning. Yeah. Yeah. And they had people on there telling you the benefits of deconstructing your religion and how much happier it makes you. Oh, yeah. You wipe away all of those old things that's always been in your way of loving people and feeling good about people and feeling good about your life. Get rid of all that stuff. Reconstruct the new religion. That's all they were talking about this morning. This place is having a sessions on it. Another session they're going to have, reclaim the trans body. Another this one, another one, Satanism and the BIPOC experience. Basically, BIPOC is a, used to be POC was people of color, okay? Used to be the, the POC, they taught it. Now it's BIPOC. Basically what it is, is everybody versus white is basically what it works on now. But it's, they're going to be talking about Satanism and how to deal with white people. This, this session will be the largest in history that they've had, and it's sold out a month or two ahead of time. I think it's in April, sometime in April. They have another one that they're doing virtually? Or yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. 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 Jesus so. is coming. Okay, get this one. Did you hear about what Ford's going to start having on their new cars? They're going to be able to shut off certain parts of your car. If you don't pay your bill, if you owe Ford Motor Company money, they're going to shut off your air conditioner or they're going to shut off your radio or they're going to make it so it's not as much fun to drive. Of course, they, you know, I told you about that here before. They can shut cars off now, and that's where they're heading with this stuff. They'll shut your car down. We talked about these 15-minute um, cities, and if you live in a 15-minute city and you use up your allotted time or you've driven your number of miles, you're going to switch your car off is what you're going to do. That's, what's, that's where we're headed with it. Ford's putting the technology in that if you don't pay your bills, they'll shut it off. Social scoring, folks. Social tracking has started. I think it's, is it Discover? They'll all be doing it eventually. It doesn't make any difference. Got one credit card company that is starting to track all gun and ammo sales that are made with their cards. And the thing I picked up on after I got a look at this a little more, which really surprised me, um, it is part of the ISO. You know what I? You remember what ISO is? It's the uh, what, International Organization for Standardization. I can remember when Mac Machine Shop had a big sign out front. We are now ISO qualified. I think it was ISO 2001 is what it started. <clears throat> and what it is, it's international standardization, meaning that. If, if Mac Machine was creating a part for you, 
with certain specifications and they are ISO qualified, you can depend that it's done to exacting standards and it, it can be tracked. You could have another ISO in Mexico do the same thing and expect the same results. Well, anyhow, this tracking of guns and ammo sales is going to be part of a new ISO international organization of tracking purchases. And it, it's all about back to the social tracking thing. It's another step taking us to where they're going to be able to track whatever you're buying and selling. Okay? And it'll tie in with the digital dollar, which is coming this summer. You're going to hear a lot more about that here in a short period of time. Um, just part of it. Have you noticed, and I know you probably have because you watch, um, um, yeah, pardon? Stu? No, I was talking about oh. Marcy watches, um, who's the earthquake guy? Oh, Dutch. Dutch yeah, Sinise. yeah, Dutch Sinise. I just, and I haven't read this anywhere. It's just noticed to me, I get, I get, um, I signed up. I don't watch Ducks and it takes too much time. He does. I agree. And I like him. I like him and I love listening to him. He's very intelligent. Mm -hmm. Got great ideas. But any it just takes too long to listen right. to him, so I don't. Mm -hmm. But I do get from USGS, I get all the earthquakes that's 6.0 and above oh. is the level I put in. Mm -hmm. I don't worry about all the earthquakes. Used to be a 6.0 earthquake, kind of a big deal. Mm -hmm. You know we're having them almost daily? I get an earthquake alert almost every day of a 6.0 or greater earthquake. And it goes back that we're told that earthquakes are going to become more frequent. It's part of the birth pains. But it just hit me. I've not read that anywhere. And I, but I just know it seems like every day I get a 6.0 alert on an earthquake. I already talked about the... Um, British government you purposely use fear to control their people during COVID. And there again, that's because they're getting, there's a lot of texts being uh, coming out. Uh, of course, the other thing, big thing is just like it's insurrection on January 6th. Man, they're blowing that up. Uh, because, you know, you're, it's, it's funny. You listen to... Mitch McConnell and Chuck Schumer and all, they're all upset about these videos coming out because it's not showing what everybody said it showed. Mm -hmm. yeah. And we're not smart enough to watch the video and determine for ourselves, see? You know, it goes against what they told us. Mm -hmm. And it's back to like this fear thing used that coming out that was used in Britain. And remember what they did when the January 6th thing came out. Oh, it was the worst. It was insurrection. The whole country's, you know, blowing up. And you got all these terrorists running around. And it just, you know, domestic terrorism. And, and it's all farce. All being lied to. I've seen some of it, but I'm really not understanding it. What is the whole thing going on with Tucker Carlson and that right now? They gave him, There's Representative there. McCarthy, Speaker of the House, he took all those videos, not all of them, but he's going to. He, I read today he's going to release all of them. He took a great bunch of them and gave them to Tucker Carlson to watch Fox News. So you guys watch them, and then they're reporting on what they're watching. And the thing of it is, it's as example, the big thing was there was a cop killed that day. It's what they all claim. There was a... Capitol policeman m murdered. He got hit with a, or he got hit with a fire extinguisher, and they killed him. That's what they reported. That's what was reported in Congress. That's what they all, Schumer and all of them stood up and said they killed that cop. Yeah, he's still alive. Guess what the videos show? Show him walking around mm -hmm. that day. Right. He didn't die that six day. Of them died. Huh? And then someone else reported six of them died. Yeah. So. One guy died. The day after the thing happened, and he didn't die of any injuries, he died natural causes. If I'm right, he had a heart attack. The day after, they claimed he was killed with a fire, ex with a fire extinguisher by the protesters on January 6th. Complete fabricated lie. And they hounded on that. 
They really did. So Tucker is now exposing He's all exposing all the he's exposing his stuff. Cuz I was thinking he's coming against Trump in some way because I No. Like Trump. He's not. It's not. It'll actually vindicate a lot of the Trump yeah. problems. If that's what he's doing, yeah, it should. Yeah. But that's what's that's so what's going on. Up off of Fox. They'll, they'll try to get Fox. Well, I heard that earlier. Yeah. I saw that earlier yeah. today. You know, yeah. That Fox just going to have a lot of Chuck Schumer on there, say, telling them, you know, do not let yeah. him yeah. continue with this. Yeah. 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 They went right on with it. Yeah. See, here, here's right. the bottom line. There, the bottom line is the same here as it is anywhere else. They're afraid of the people. Okay, they really are. And it's true in any country that you have. We haven't had it here because basically we all felt like we had an open democratic government. It's obvious we do not and haven't had for a good while. And it's back to this thing. In fact, we've been lied to. And they do a good job of lying. And they do a good job of covering their tails and have done a good job. But the facts are starting to come out and now I think they're really afraid of the people, I really do. And uh, that's what it's all, I think they ought to be too. Sue? They still got those old green guys over at Dayton. The green guys from, oh, <laughs> Roswell. Roswell. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah, that's coming. That'll be the next, next thing that, uh, It'll probably be, I can foresee this being, they'd like for you to believe they're aliens and it will be used by the Antichrist or be used by Satan to try to help undermine God. That's part of, it's going to be part of the plan. That's what I believe personally. I have no, no, it's just my personal belief, but I think that's what's coming. I think also, it's funny because I, I sent a message to Pastor here a month or so ago when some of this stuff was coming out. I said, you know, I'm beginning to think Enoch really did see a lot of that stuff he talked about. And the thing that is, I really believe that somehow or other this is all tied back to the fallen angels that we know Amen. came to earth. I really do. I mean, that, and there again, that's just my personal belief. I have nothing that I can hang my hat on and tell you, you know, of any fact or anything, but that's my personal belief. Oh, you mean the aliens? Yeah. Oh, okay. And I think some of that stuff that we think's far out in La La Land, if you read the book of Enoch, Enoch, sucker may be true, <laughs> you know. And that's what crossed my mind that morning. That's why I sent it to oh. Pastor. And uh, he said, you may be right. <laughs> so... Yeah. There's certain angels and demons yeah. that's coming out. Right. So with all the earthquakes, think about it. Yeah. And they just, where was it? I was just watching. Was it over in, I don't know where it was. But they had a parade. It was a devil parade. Is it church? Or one of the churches somewhere? Somewhere. But they had this big old elaborate parade going and everything. And after that, the next day, they started having all these earthquakes. Mm. Yeah. So it's, you know, a lot of this stuff may be tied together. You just don't know, but it's interesting to think about. But anyhow, the, like I said, keep thinking. You know, you should fear nothing because it's all going to happen. It's all going to take place. We know it's coming. It's just interesting to kind of watch how the pieces of the puzzle come together. That, that's the way I look at it every day. I just kind of, oh, there's a piece. Just like his mouse thing. You know, merge, and then the thing from, from Australia where they're merging brain cells with a computer. Yeah, it's coming. Man's playing God. Mm -hmm. There's no doubt about it. And being pretty successful at some of the stuff we're doing. But it all has to happen and come together for the Antichrist to be able to step up one of these days and control all this. Any other questions or anything? No? Well... Brenda, you want to close us out with prayer, please? Sure. Lord, we thank you for all the information that we get to learn from Doug. 
We thank you for all of us being able to get together and talk about your word and what's going to happen in our future. And Lord, we just ask for you to have your hand over all of us and all of the congregation in this church, Lord. Help keep us safe and guide us. In Jesus' name, amen. 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 Well, you women enjoy the rest of your week. It's all over Saturday. <laughs> <laughs> Pardon? I appreciate you all coming in tonight. It was fun. <laughs>